Hey, what's going on? Today I'm gonna to show you how to make this hover effect on something like a credit card or really any sort of card component that you have. We've got a little bit of shine going on and we got some 3D sort of perspective going on here. So stay tuned, we're gonna build this in Webflow. Hey there, Webbay. Let's get started. So if we take our image here and start applying some transforms, like say rotating it and uh, on the X and the Y, you can see this does not look very 3D. And that's because on the parent, we wanna set the child perspective. So I just select the parent here called image wrap, and I'm gonna come down here to two and 3D transformations. I'll click these three little dots, and on the children perspective, I'll set this to something like 1000 pixels. Now this is kind of setting, like zooming us out a thousand pixels like a camera would be. And so as soon as I see that, you can see the card is starting to look more 3D now. And if I come down to the image and I start just live playing with our transformations here, you can see how we're getting that 3D effect. Anyways, I'm going to cancel on the element here on our canvas. And now we can go ahead and start working on our interaction, which is a mouse move interaction. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna select image wrap and I'm gonna place the interaction on that element. And so we'll define our element trigger. This is going to be mouse move over element. And this is just gonna happen on desktop and above cause we don't have a mouse on tablet or phone. So let's play a mouse animation and I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus icon to start it. And we'll call this a credit card mouse move, something like that. And now when the mouse is over here on the left side, which is 0% uh, corresponding to this over here, then I want the card to kind of, I'm using my hands here like it kind of makes sense, but that's <laughs> the way it does to you. Uh, what I'm going to do is rotate on the Y axis, I believe. So let's go ahead and just kind of look at how that looks. And then 100% is the X axis over here. So let's go ahead and define a 0%. We want a rotation. And you could do it on the image wrap here. I'm gonna do it on the image itself. So let's do that. We'll, we have it selected over there in the navigator. I click rotate and then now we see as our Y, we can rotate it this way and that way. And I'm gonna start when X is on 0%, I want some sort of negative rotation. Let's do negative uh, 15 degrees. And then at 100%, we will do the opposite, positive 15 degrees. So just like that. And now if I have live preview on, we can see as I take my mouse from left to right here, we're getting that um, rotation along the Y axis. So as we you know, go up and down, we wanna do similar on the X axis. So at zero, we have our image selected still, we'll grab rotate and we'll go something from, do we want negative 15? No, I think we want positive 15 here. And down at 100%, we will rotate to negative 15 degrees. Okay, and live preview is off. And I just noticed I set this actually in the wrong place. These need to be down here under the mouse Y actions. So under mouse Y actions, we add another rotation and on the X at 0%, we want it to be 15 degrees. And at 100%, we want it to be negative 15 degrees. Let's turn live preview back on. And now we can see, it looks like our mouse is kind of pushing the card away wherever the mouse is. So that's great. I mean, we've pretty much finished the interaction, but there's one other thing. We can add a little bit of a shine to the card. So let's come in here. Oops, not a link block, I want a div. So let's grab a div and I'm just gonna put it right inside our image wrapper here and I'll call this shine. And the image wrap I'm gonna set to position relative such that on the shine I can set position absolute. Now let's go ahead, I want this to be a square. So we'll say something like, uh, I don't know, 20 rem, we'll just hard code this here. And let's bring that down. I want it to be about half the size of the card. So 14 looks good and 14 rem here. And now I'm gonna take image wrap and give it a flex center center. That way the shine defaults to the middle of the card here. And now let's go ahead and set the background color to be full white and we'll give it a 50% border radius just like that. And now when I select image wrap here, uh, let's go back into our interaction and we're gonna clean up the shine effect later, but I like to be able to see a lot as I'm working on the animations. So we'll click the gear icon and, oh, where did it go? I wonder where it went. Uh, let's think about Z indexing. Now, probably what happened is that when we applied the transform, that gave the element priority over shine. And another thing too is that the render order is that the last thing in the group will be rendered. So I have a feeling if we drag it down here, it still won't be visible because if I come back here, and now let's go and preview our animation. Oh, now it's working. So we just got our render order wrong. I was thinking that maybe the transform property would cause it to like pop over, um, but nope, this makes sense. They are both within the same stacking context. So let's um, 
let's finish up what we were working on here. I'm gonna select shine with my interaction open. And now what I want to do is when my mouse is over here, I want the shine to appear over here like the light is hitting it. And when the mouse is over here on the right, then I want the shine to appear on the left. So with the mouse X, let's say when we're at 0%, we are going to move our shine element. Now let's go ahead and move it up here. We're just using percents here. I like it to be, I guess about there, kind of on the edge, maybe 90% actually. And we can just eyeball this one. And then when we're at 100%, we'll move it negative 90%. Mm. Yeah, negative 90%, just like that. And I'm liking that, that is good. Now let's do the opposite for the Y action. So let's just check it. You can see our shine effect is moving as we um, move in the X axis there. And then we will go ahead on the Y axis and move it. Let's uh, on the Y axis here, negative, where does 50% get us? Yeah, that's looking good. And then we'll move it to positive 50%. And if I come here, then I can see, oh, I'm going the wrong way here. I want the shine to be opposite. So we'll just come here and set this to plus 50% and this one to minus 50%. Live preview, and now I'm getting exactly what I want. Let's save this and finish up our styling on the shine element here. We're going to add a blur filter. So blur something like 100 pixels. Uh, bring that down a little bit. I like, yes, we'll try 60 here. And our opacity as well, we can bring down to like uh, 50%. Actually, I'm gonna bring the opacity way down to 20% and I'm gonna come down on the blur. Uh, no, you know what, it looked good. And let's bring the opacity up here. So if you look closely, there's actually a little bit of bleed of that blur element on the words in and debt kind of over in our text over here. And you know, not too visible on this project, but might happen on something else that you're working on. Now, my immediate thought would be like, oh, let's just take, uh, you know, image wrap and set that to, what is it, overflow hidden. But you'll see this is going to present a problem because now we're cutting off our card as the 3D transform happens. Uh, you can maybe try to work some padding in there, but to me, that's less than ideal. So what I would do is undo this overflow hidden and we'll just simplify it with Z index here. So because our content and our image wrap divs are siblings to each other, we can just set the content to be higher than image wrap. So let's grab our content div here and we'll make sure it's set to position relative with a Z index of two and click out of there so that it gets set. And image wrap here is already set to position relative, remember, because shine was absolute as a child. And we'll set that Z index to one. And let me just double check that content, yep, it's still relative with two. And if we preview now, now we can see that since the text is showing above that shine element in the stacking context, uh, we're good to go. So that completes that. So there you have it. That's how to make a fancy 3D credit card hover animation. Now everybody's gonna wanna use those credit cards to get more points. And if you like the video, of course, give me some points by liking and subscribing and check out this next video that's gonna be recommended right here. I will see you in the next one.